Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're working on a 2003, it's a Ford, it's an F350. It's two wheel drive, not four wheel, not that it makes any difference in this case. We're going to be changing the rear brakes and we're going to change the rear rotors. Um, what happened is a um, customer came in with no brake pedal whatsoever. We had a failure in one of the uh, hydraulic lines that go from the front to the back. So we had to replace that section of line which was all routed out. I didn't have a chance to film it because yesterday was an extremely busy day. Um, but today, uh, when I was in here bleeding the brakes, I could see that there was no brakes left on. It was right down to the uh, grinding into the rotor um, when I had to bleed the brakes because I had to bleed the, uh, the air out of the system once we changed the line. Um, so I, I do have to change the, uh, the brakes and the rotors here. So a couple of things I want to tell you. Doing the brakes, not a big deal, fairly easy. Getting the rotor off is a little bit more difficult because the rotor itself is actually rusted onto the, uh, to the axle and it makes it very difficult trying to get the drum off of the parking brake shoes because the parking brake shoes get all rusted inside. And if you, if you get in there and you bang it off with a hammer or you pry it off with pry bars or, or whatever, you're going to damage the backing plate. If you damage the backing plate, you're going to wind up having to change the backing plate because the, the parking brake shoes have pins that actually go through it and then they rotate and hold them in place. If you get in there and you start prying to pull this rotor off of the, uh, the parking brake shoes, you're going to rip those pins out of the backing plate and you're going to be changing the parking brake shoes at the least and at the, at the worst possible case you'll be changing the backing plate also. So I'm going to show you what to do and how to do it without doing any further damage. Uh, we are going to take the, the adjustment off of the parking brake so we can actually, instead of the parking brakes touching into the drum, the, the drum portion of the rotor, we're going to reduce it and then be able to pull it right off. So let me show you a couple of tools you're going to need and let's get started and get this job done the right way and get it out the door without creating further problems. All right, these are some of the, uh, the things you're going to actually need. Um, you're going to need a, a brake spoon to adjust the uh, or take off the adjustment on the brakes or a screwdriver, whichever, whichever works for you. Um, I'm probably going to use a screwdriver just because it's a really tight spot. 10 millimeter socket on a ratchet so we could take the, uh, the, um, the caliper off, a screwdriver or a pry bar to pry back the piston so we can make sure that everything functions the way it's supposed to. Um, and of course, my favorite item, the brake grease. All right, um, these are the new shoes already, which I'm going to show you how to do that. And I am going to change the hardware where the shoes run up against it because of the rust in here. So, uh, all right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get in here with our uh, pry bar and we're going to pry the, uh, the piston back in on the brakes. <clears throat> and the way you do that is you get in the back right over here like this, which I already did this too by the way. You pry back on this here, keep constant pressure on it, and then you come in here with your screwdriver on the other side here and you push the piston all the way back into the bore like that so you have the piston recessed all the way. It saves you a step later on. And the reason we're doing that is we want to check to make sure that these sliders right here are good. This one, as well as this one here. And you can tell they're good because, as they're called sliders, it slides back and forth. And these are the hardware we're going to be replacing. So, first thing we're going to do, take out the 10 millimeter here and here, and then we're going to continue. So, uh, let me get set up and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take those 10 millimeter bolts out that are in here. Same thing here. And once you loosen them, then you can take them out by hand. And then we're just going to take the caliper and relocate that off to the side here. Don't lose these, you're going to need them. Take the caliper and just slide it off to the side. It is a little bit rusty in here, so you may have to pry it just a little bit to get it out. And for now, we're just going to put this off to the side, and we'll come back to this in a little bit. But as you can see, 
the shoe itself is actually right down to nothing. So we'll come back to this in just a minute. Now we're gonna get this rotor off here. The way you can do it is you wanna break it loose first because you wanna just bang it in the back here and just break it loose. And then we're gonna go underneath and we're gonna take the adjustment off on the, uh, on the parking brakes. So what I normally do is I just get back in here with a pry bar and just hold a little bit of pressure on it and just give it a pull. If it don't come off, then you hit it a couple of times on the side right here while pulling on your pry bar and it'll come right off. Sometimes. We're going to hit it to the back then here. Before we go any further, I just want to point this out to you. We broke the rust loose in here. Now we need to take the adjustment off underneath the bottom right here. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, what you would do is down underneath here, you see this little piece right here? Just pry this out. Don't lose it, because you're gonna to need to put this back in again. And if you look up underneath here, you see that little star wheel right there? We need to turn that wheel to take the adjustment off. Probably going to be good. We'll see. Okay. When you take the adjustment off, it makes it a lot easier. Now, I'm going to show you why this is so difficult to remove. This is why it's so hard to remove. You see how that has that rust lip inside there? That rust is what's holding this from coming off. Because it has to slide over those parking brakes there. And these are the pins I was telling you about. You don't want to rip these through the backing plate or you'll be changing the backing plate. So, uh, alright, let's grab the new rotor and uh, Let's get this job wrapped up and, uh, and get it out the door. Okay. Now we have our new rotor. We can put it back on. Just slide it right on like this. And as you can see, it's pretty loose here. So we have to adjust it from the back. Before we put the caliper back on with the new pads, we want to adjust this first so that there's no drag on it whatsoever when we put the new caliper on. So, what we're going to do now, and I just want to point this out, before I put the, uh, the rotor on here, I did clean it with brake cleaner to clean off the face of the rotor here as well as here. All right, you just spray it and you just wipe the whole thing down. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go back underneath the bottom and we're going to adjust that parking brake so we have drag on it. Um, what I always do is I'll screw the nut onto it to hold the rotor pretty much in place. It's not going to be super tight just to hold the rotor so that it doesn't move around when you try to adjust the parking brake. And as far as adjusting the parking brake, we're just going to reverse what we did where before we got in here with our screwdriver and we took the adjustment off. Well now we're just going to adjust it and put some drag back on it. I'm going to show you how much drag. I always 
do is I tighten it until it doesn't turn anymore. Now you can see it has a good drag on it, that's too much. You want to back it off just a little bit so that it's not actually dragging. Okay. That's the way it's supposed to, it's supposed to be. All right. Now, you can use a screwdriver, you can use a brake spoon, you can use whatever works for you, but in this case the screwdriver worked pretty well. Now we're going to put our clip, I mean our plug back inside there so we lock it off. And that's it. Right, so that's all done, and uh, now we're going to do the same thing, put our brake shoes back on. But before we put those shoes back on, before we put the new uh, shoes back on, we're going to take off these clips, and we're going to replace them with new ones, because these are actually pretty rusty. They just pop right off just like that. And we can put the new ones back on. They just fit right over the top like this. And you push them down. Same thing up here. And the way you can tell if they're on all the way is just put your shoe in there and make sure it slides on. It does. Same thing on the inner one. You can do the exact same thing on the inner one. Make sure it's in. And as you can see, it is. All right, so now we have these in here. We're going to put some lubricant. Everywhere that the brake is going to touch, we're going to grease it. Just like that. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to take our brake pads out. Now, you see this is wet, but that's the reason it's wet is because I had to bleed the brakes yesterday when I did the, uh, the brake line. All right, so we're going to take this shoe now, and we're going to put this on the side for a minute. We're going to take this one off, too, and the way you do that is just push it out, and you get in here with the screwdriver, and you can pry it. This doesn't matter because this shoe is actually it's trash. And we're just going to pry these clips, and it will push the pad off for now. Now, I want to point out on the, on the brake pad too, the difference on the brake pads. This is the pad that I just took off. As you can see, the brake pad itself has two different brake pads. Um, one of them is actually has a little, see this little cutout right here? And this one doesn't. This pad is actually the wrong pad. So we don't put this pad on there. This pad here is the correct pad. As you can see, it's the same exact groove on the top and it's flat on the bottom. And the reason for that is because you're going to put it in here on the caliper like that and it's going to slide in like that. I can't tell you how many times I've seen cars that they have one on the top like this and they have it the other way down on the bottom. How they got it on there, I have no idea. But if you just watch what you're doing and make sure you put the right pad in the right location, you'll be fine. All right, so next thing we're going to do is before we put our new brake pad back on, we're going to push these pins out here like this, take them out like this, and this one here, the same thing. Just push it out with your thumb or screwdriver, whatever you have. Again, this is greasy because I bled it yesterday. Take this out like this, take this one out also. Both of these are both the same, so you don't have to worry about it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, right here, we're going to lubricate the inside of it, both sides. Like so that is greased really thoroughly inside. What we're going to do is we're going to lubricate the pins themselves. Like that. 
and then we're just going to reinstall them back into the caliper. Whether you go in this way or you go in this way, it makes no difference. But I'm going to go in from the back because it's a little bit easier. Push it all the way through until it snaps back up. See that groove right there? You want this rubber boot to snap into that groove, see? Just like that, so it slides back and forth. We'll do the same thing with the other one right here. Push it in. Make sure the boot snaps up on both sides. It slides nice and easy. So we're good. All right. Now, next thing we're going to do is uh, this was the other brake pad that came off. So again, we need to make sure we have the correct pad with the clips in the back like that, and then we're going to match it up to make sure we have the right pad. See the difference here? This is not the right one. So this is the mirror image. So we don't take that one. We come back, and this is the one here that we got. See? Same here, same here. All right, now, we're going to put this back inside. And the way we're going to do it is just put a little bit of lubricant on here. It'll save you a little bit of a problem later on. And we're going to take our caliper, like this. Put your brake shoe in, and then push it all the way in. And you'll feel it snap in place. Like that. Now, the reason you put that lubricant on is so it slides nice and easy. All right, next thing we're going to do we're going to take our other brake pad that we previously matched up and we're going to put that back into the, uh, into the caliper where it belongs right here. We're going to put a little bit of lubricant here and here. This is going to slide over the top of it and snap in place. We'll take this, put it over the top like that. And push it down. And you'll feel when it snaps in. You heard that snap. I just want to point something else out to you. Now, even me, you see this is not in all the way here. You'll try to put this on and it won't go in all the way. So what you need to do is you just have to tap this down just a little bit until it seats itself. And you see how it's nice and flush now? Now it's in as far as it can go. All right, next thing we're going to do is with the caliper, remember we had these caliper with the grooves cut here. This has to go in first on the top, like this. You have to push that piston back in a little bit more. This is a tool to actually recess the piston. You put it back inside here, push it down, and you just tighten it and push the piston back in just a little bit more so I can get it in there. All right? And then after you push the piston back in all the way, you get the top on first. Remember, these sliders, you may have to push them back in a little bit. Get the top in. Push it in like that, and then you reinstall both of your, your bolts that you previously took out. You're going to screw in by hand as far as you can, and then once you've got the port by hand, then you can tighten them up with your ratchet. Now, I had an email the other day from somebody asking me what's the torque specs on these caliper bolts. Honestly, there is a torque spec, but I never look, I never really pay attention to it. You don't want to make it, as he put, super tight. Uh, you don't want to make it super tight because you don't want to strip out the bolt or the mounting bracket that it connects onto. You bring it down until it's snug. 
and you just make it a little bit more, just like that, not too much more. And that's it, we're all set. This side is done, now we're going to go around and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. But I just want to point out a couple of things. Okay. So we put our rotor on, we put the nut on it to hold the rotor in place while we tightened up the adjustment. We did the parking brake adjustment under the bottom right here. Uh, we, we adjusted it until it, was a, a, it wouldn't turn any longer and then we put a, uh, we backed it off and just had a slight drag on it just so it drags a little bit. We put our new brake pads into the knuckle itself, into the caliper. We made sure we had the groove cut out the way it was supposed to be on both sides. We installed our new um, hardware kit and we lubricated the slide pins so that everything slides nice and easily. We tightened up our bolts here, the 10 millimeter here and here, and uh, that's it. We're all set. So we're going to do the other side now. We're going to get the job wrapped up and out the door. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.